Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina. And in today's video, I'm really excited to share four simple DIY projects. It's all about thrifted finds or old things that you have around your home from furnishings and home decor that just need a new outlook. So I'm gonna walk you through all the materials and supplies as well as the finishes I do. So let's head over to project one. I wanted to give this dresser an upcycle. It's actually a friend's dresser that they were considering to remove and possibly just give it away, but I thought maybe we could do something with a little bit of characteristic by adding some decoupage paper with this amazing image called Fishing for Ideas. I will leave the link in the description box below where you can find even more really fun decoupage papers. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the hardware and I think we can recycle this as well. There are tons of ways you can upcycle old hardware. For this particular piece, I'm going to use the Crayon Satin Black Finish, and I'm just going to put two coats. I'm going to let each coat dry first and apply the second coat, just so it has an ultra, ultra black finish to it. This particular product will dry super quickly. First thing I'm going to do is clean the piece really well. I'm going to use the TSP cleaner or you can use mineral spirits. By placing the drawers together, I now can lay my decoupage paper down to figure out exactly where I want it placed on the drawers. I want to have a little bit of a rustic look for the decoupage, so I'm going to use the Mod Podge and a disposable sponge applicator. So I find it really helpful when I use the disposable sponge applicators to make sure that I have nice even strokes with the Mod Podge onto the surface I'm going to put my decoupage onto. Other great decoupage paper is actually designed tissue paper that you could get at stationery stores and or you could use napkins with some really fun designs on them. Once the decoupage paper is laid, I then will use an old credit card or card stock. This way I can try to smooth it out a little bit. There is an iron way of doing a decoupage so you can remove any of the creases, but I actually love having the creases and you'll see why in just a few moments. I found that this was the easiest way with this particular dresser drawer set by placing them close together so this way my image will match once I put them all back into the dresser. I'm just going to remove any excess and then with an X-Acto knife I will actually cut the tissue paper between the drawer. The Mod Podge will actually dry very very quickly but this will also allow me a little bit of time to go around and smooth the edges now that I have cut and trimmed the decoupage piece for the drawer fronts. Now going back to the base of the dresser, I'm going to start with chalk paint in this color olive. It's probably one of my favorite colors. It's so much fun to work with as well as blending some other highlights and lowlights to it. I'm going to use a flat chippy brush. This way I can get into the small little crevices and details with this. I'd also like to blend a little bit and I love using these brushes to blend my chalk paint colors. I will start just with one coat of the chalk paint in the olive. I'm also going to be doing a lot of random brush strokes and you'll see why in just a few moments. Blending with chalk paints is super easy, but I love working with random brush strokes. I find when you blend in some other highlights and lowlights, it looks a lot more natural. So again, I'm just going to start with the base coat and then I'm going to get into the next color. So to create some low lights to this piece, I'm going to use Amsterdam green, which is very similar to say an emerald green. This is also just going to create very random low lights as if it had a natural aged kind of look to the piece. There's nothing difficult about doing this. You're literally just going to keep wiping it into the olive. Back and forth, random brush strokes. Adding little hints of water really help move the chalk paint because it dries so quickly and evaporates. So I'll just spray little spritzes here and there and I just keep working it in, creating these random low lights. Again, just starting with that base, I'm going around in small sections. So starting with that olive chalk paint and then I'm just gonna go and add in that little bit of low lights with the Amsterdam green. One thing I have 
found when working with decoupage, it's really nice when you can use your chalk paint base colors and work in a little tiny bit in around your decoupage. So that's all I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of that olive and Amsterdam green, almost to a dry brush style. So it's just gonna create as if we painted the decoupage. For my next step, I'm going to make a old white chalk paint wash. I like to use damp towels. So these are shop towels because they're lint free, they're perfect. My chalk paint wash is 50% paint to 50% water. All you're gonna do is just wipe that chalk paint wash on. I use the damp cloth just to add in kind of this ragging technique. That way, I'm not actually removing the chalk paint wash with a dry rag, I'm actually moving the chalk paint wash around to create a texture. Really important to make sure your base coat of any chalk paint is 100% completely cured and dried. And for the front, I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of the chalk paint wash to the decoupage. With the creases that are created with that decoupage and then the paint, I love the look. It gives it such character, depth, and texture. Once everything is completed, I'm going to clear wax just with a lint-free cloth to the entire piece. I thought it might be fun to create something more modern and fun with this laminate bookshelf unit. It is actually a great size. It's perfect for a lot of rooms and styles of decor. I wanted to try something of a modern look for this particular shelving unit. I'm going to use a really jet black, a thinian black chalk paint. I will apply it with a foam roller and I'm going to use a chip brush to allow myself to get into the corners and crevices of the actual bookshelf. The first coat is really just going to be kind of a set primer and also creating a shadow for the second coat. Once the second coat comes on, then it's really going to turn into a nice jet black. Still really important to wipe down and clean your pieces. If there's any types of oils, even from fingers and hands, sometimes that paint is not going to adhere very well and it could actually start to smear. So again, just really important, a mineral spirits or a TPS cleaner will really clean any furniture piece really well. Using the foam roller, it's gonna go on really quickly, but as you can see, the first coat is not so pretty. Once you get into this second coat, now it starts to come together. I wanted to try something really fun, easy, and inexpensive to create some depth as well as texture to the back, but also something that will create a really good contrast since we're using such an ultra jet black. I did the exact same thing to the actual shelves as I did the unit, so just rolling it right on. Using the peel and stick wallpaper was perfect. And it just so happened that the width of this wallpaper fit exactly to the backing of the shelving unit. It's perfect. It's called the wall pops. I'm going to leave this particular one in my description box below, but it's perfect because all you're going to do is just peel off the back. Then very slowly, you can just run it down just like you would with wallpaper. I found it super helpful to actually have an extra set of hands, so I'm really thankful my husband was around to help me. This way, it's just gonna help when one person pulls the backing off, the other person can actually just use a small card and run any air bubbles out at the same time. It's just making it a little bit easier and more simplified. If you wanna seal your chalk paint project, but keep a beautiful, nice jet black matte finish, you can use the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte.
Another really cool thrifted find is these old ottomans. Between the cushion itself as well as the base, I thought maybe first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the spindles. So we're going to remove these just using an oscillating saw so that way it's nice and smooth and direct to the actual legs and there won't be any evidence that there was any spindles. I originally wanted to start with a brown chalk paint but I don't have any so I'll have to improvise on what I do have. And for the cushion I thought maybe just using an old burlap would be perfect for this and I wanted to try it with the Gorilla Spray. So we're just going to go right over top of the original cushion with this and there's going to be no sewing. The spray is really easy to use. You're just going to apply it onto the material and then you're just going to add your material. This product by Gorilla actually has a really good adhesion to it so it's just like actual reupholster but without any of the sewing. I'm just going to remove any of the excess burlap and then I'm going to create some folds. I would just use the Gorilla Adhesive Spray every time I wanted to make an actual fold. This way it had a nice cohesive look to it. Then I'm going to take the corners and I'm also going to fold those in. I really wanted to use a brown chalk paint but I didn't have any so I'm going to go and use a French linen which is similar to a taupe color. I'm going to apply two full coats to the base of this ottoman. I'm also going to be using a lot of random every which way brush strokes so this way I can create a lot of texture because when I get into the next step I'm really going to need that texture to get the look that I want. Once your base coat is completely dry you can now use a white wash chalk paint. Again, just like the dresser from the first project, I am using a old white chalk paint, 50% water, 50% paint, using the same ragging technique. Just gonna use a damp cloth, tap it around my project after I've applied the wash, and this is gonna create some beautiful random textures. From the texture we created with the base coat with lots of random brush strokes, this gives low points for the actual wash to sit in as well. Once everything is completely dry, I will use a lint-free shop towel and just apply clear wax. It's just like applying a moisturizer to the furniture to seal the chalk paint. I have this burlap border that I think I purchased from Michael's craft store. So what I'll do is go around the entire ottoman cushion. I'm going to fold in the burlap corners first and this will create a little bit more of a cohesive look all the way around the cushion. I found it a little easier just to work in small sections and I added a little tiny bit of the hot glue to the very top. Again, just so that way it meshed in and it was a little bit more of a continuity look to it and added the pieces that I need. When I first saw this little magazine end table, I wasn't sure if I could even save this, but I thought, you know what, let's give it a try and see what happens. It's in pretty rough condition and it's quite wobbly as well. So I'm thinking we're going to have to remove the veneer on the top and just take everything right off and figure out another way we can put some stability to it and see if we can anchor it a little bit better. So I'm going to use the hot gun. And what it's going to do is it's going to lift off any of the glue that's underneath by just warming it and then using these simple little scraping tools we're just going to peel all of that veneer right off. We did note that there was another little piece of plywood between the veneer and the actual base and it was actually really water damaged as well. So we decided just to continue with the hot gun and take that off. So now it was right down to that base. I'm going to add 
a little bit of sanding with it with a 60 grit and a 120 just to smooth it out little tiny brackets into the corners to give it more stability i'm going to be using the chalk paint in a primer red as well as an antoinette which is a very soft pink Starting with a base coat, I'm just going to do random brush strokes with the red primer and I'm going to apply two full coats to this piece. Because of the condition of this little table, I really felt we're going to have to kind of go with something that's a little bit rustic, but I wanted to give it some character. I love the primer red color because it's almost like a red brick color once it's completely dry. Similar to the other chalk paint wash ideas, lots of random brush strokes with your chalk paint so that way you have some high and low points with your paint. I'm going to try it in the Antoinette for a chalk paint wash. Again, 50% paint, 50% water. I'm going to use that moist shop towel to give lots of random texture. I really wanted to go out and try something completely different I haven't done and play around with a little bit more of a colorful kind of theme for this particular piece as I wasn't even sure if I could actually save this. The size of this table is a perfect practice piece if you really just want to go out and try something completely different or create that kind of colorful accent in a room that has its own character. But I found by doing a very similar chalk paint slash ragging technique to this, it was really going to work with its imperfections. Again, before you do any chalk paint wash or ragging technique, make sure your base coat is 100% completely cured and dried. I'm going to try some stripes with some painter's tape, and I found these at Michael's, which is an actual adhesive stencil, so it's got a stick to it. So the stripes, where the magazines are actually held at the side of the table, I'm just making nice straight stripes along the side using the painter tape as a divider in between so it's nice and even. Chalk paint washes dry very quickly, but make sure it's 100% dry before applying any type of adhesive tape or stencil. This way it doesn't damage the texture you've created or pull the paint off. I'm going to use a little bit of this Chateau Grey color as well as some old ochre for both the stripes and the stenciling. For the stenciling, I'm going to use the old ochre just with a small artist brush, just lightly, almost like a dry brush onto a stencil. And because this is so thin and the stencil itself sticks, it's really easy and it's very defined. I'm really, really liking these adhesive stencils. So to make sure my stripes are really, really clean, I'm going to use the Chateau Grey and I'm going to brush stroke in one direction, going all the way up the stripe. Then just remove the tape as soon as I'm done and let everything 100% completely dry. Using a lint-free cloth or shop towel, I'm just going to go ahead and add some clear wax on. This just seals the chalk paint. Thank you so much for watching today's video and please let me know in the comments below which one your favorite project was. I have so many more DIYs, furniture transformations, and room makeovers to share with you soon. Plus, we recently sold the house, so we've also bought a new place and I can't wait to take you on that journey. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That's going to tell you when I upload my next video. And until then, take care, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon.